Please join us in our entrance hymn, number 108, Holy, 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 number 108. classmates and teachers as just as last year the graduation ceremony was held in the parking lot. We want to thank our parents, families, and teachers and coaches who have helped us through our years at SMS. We especially want to give thanks and praise to God for the opportunity to celebrate this Mass together and we ask for his help in the years to come as we enter high school and face our new challenges. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As we prepare to embark this, on our, this new journey, we remember that the Word of God serves as a guide to each of our lives, helping us to do God's will. We will remember the crucifix as a symbol of our faith and the strength we have shown as a class through our years here. We will vow to always love and honor God and our country with our whole hearts, minds, and souls. We will give thanks to God for the outstanding education we have received during the years here. We will vow to stay committed to our academics as we go on to high school. We thank God for all of the good, great gifts and talents he has given us. We thank him for all the success we have been given. Deuteronomy 31.6 be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsaken you. Thanks, ladies. And we'll begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Tonight is certainly an exciting night to celebrate, to come together and do just that. I think uh, Tessa just read, read one of my very first scripture passage, very first memorized scripture passage, Deuteronomy 31 6. Do not fear, be in dread of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. Always the case. And as they said, as we began to last year, this took place in the parking lot, so we are on our way moving forward. Uh, we keep asking the Lord to strengthen us in these days, most especially we ask Him to be with us as we start Mass. So let's take a moment, brothers and sisters, and call to mind our sins, asking for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Graciously grant to your church, O merciful God, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, she may be devoted to you with all her heart and united in purity of intent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God, that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward per perverting the truth, to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonish each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can be built to you, that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing you know well that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work of that sort we must help with the weak, and keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were weeping they were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial, our responsorial psalm is Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the king bring you gifts. Sing to God, kingdoms of the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God, chant praises to the Lord, who rides up on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his power, his voice resounds, the voice of power, confess the power of God. Sing to God, kingdoms of the earth. Over Israel is his majesty, his power is in the skies. Awesome in a sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. And please stand. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy 
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they, would, that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them into truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated into truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We could not have picked a better reading for tonight's gospel. It was just the happenstance that it's for today. It says that Jesus is looking up to the Father in heaven. And as he's looking up to the Father in heaven, he's saying, Father, make them one as you and I are one. And I want to talk about that from the perspective of these guys. I want to talk about three times, uh, and you guys, that have affected me a lot in my time with you guys as the eighth graders. Uh, the first is... The, uh, in third grade, that you guys' first year, my first year here was your third grade year here. And uh, that was, uh, you guys, I don't know, there was something, you guys always had a lot of spunk, right? Like always had a lot of spirit. It was always fun kind of coming to your classroom because you always knew there would be some entertainment. There would be some fun things. They know, oh yeah, they're, they're shaking their head. There's always entertainment in you guys' class. And it was clear from third grade, right? Going all the way back to third grade. I remember one day, I, it was just happenstance, I walked into the classroom, and uh, you guys know what I'm going to talk about already, but I walked randomly into the classroom, and Mrs. Brummel told me, she said, hey, Father, which she always does so well, she always gives me a good lead into what's going on in class that day, she says, Father, uh, we're talking about debates today, and uh, so we were debating, and you were figuring out what's a good debate, and what's a bad debate, and what looks good, and I was thinking about that, that like, man, we could certainly stand to have that very thing happening to most of our world right now, right? Like, what does a good debate look like? What does it look like to talk to each other and care and charity and all those kind of things that we learned? And I decided to choose to teach you guys via the negative route, and because I, I asked them, uh, which is their favorite, because they, they were kind of talking, I think it was Ninja Turtles came up somehow, right? And the Ninja Turtles came up and I said, well, who's your favorite? And um, I don't remember, who's, whose favorite was uh, Donatello? Was anybody in, some of you guys, someone, you guys, no one? You guys definitely had some, fa some of you guys like have changed your opinion since third grade. Some of you like Donatello. But who, who here was Michelangelo, if I remember? All right, there's some Michelangelo fans. All right, there's a few of them. Santi's not sure. He's not like, who's on me? I'm like, he's forgetting. It's been a long time since he watched the Ninja Turtles, right? And then uh, who here was uh, Raphael? Was anybody? There was definitely P. I know there was because I was in shock. I was like, likes Raphael. Right? Like, no one. And uh, so, but then who was Leonardo? Was there Leonardo? All right, there's my, there's my crew. All right, so there's the Leonardo fans, right? And I remember there was a couple people who were specifically fired up about Michelangelo. And they were saying, Michelangelo is the best. And so um, Mrs. Brummel was mentioning, like, what's good, what's bad in debate. And I said, I'm just going to tell you all right here and now that any of you that thinks anybody other than Leonardo is the best Ninja Turtle, you are objectively wrong, 
right? <laughs> and the room erupted, right? Like third graders, angry, yelling, hollering, looking at, yelling at Father, you're wrong. I think I remember Finnan coming out of his desk, right? And um, those kind of things, right? That was happening. There was always this sense, and I was thinking about that, uh, what we did, and we, I actually, what I did, I went home on a couple of weeks later, and I picked up my, which my nephew still plays with when he comes home, I picked up all of my Ninja Turtles, and we actually set up a Ninja Turtle war in the middle of the third grade room and all this kind of stuff. And I said, we got to remember this, right? And uh, so we have to remember this moment of you, the battle of what debates are not supposed to look like. And I started it in that way that we're supposed to enter into charitable conversation, not just say, you're wrong because I think you're wrong and all those kind of things, right? And I, I went and I got my least favorite Ninja Turtle stuffed animal at home, right? And I, he because Donatello is my least favorite, right? And so I brought him and he had been following you all through your, through your days in the school. And uh, just recently, oh, she's so embarrassed right now. Just recently, Donatello came to an untimely demise, right? And uh, he disappeared, sadly. And uh, so what I did, I, and like, praise God, she came through big, right? Is, um, I suppose this is actually kind of funny. This is all that's left of Donatello, right? And um, so, um, and anyhow, I was, I, what I did, I was like, oh, I got to come up with something. And I, this is actually going to talk, we're going to talk about Jesus in a second. It's going to make sense, right? But uh, what I wanted, I went last night, I said, well, I got to find something. And I went to Walmart. There's nothing at Walmart like Ninja Turtle. It was one thing in the entire store, right? And this was it. And I thought, this just proves my point right here. Because the only thing was this Hot Wheels of Leonardo, who is objectively the best, right? Mm -hmm. So it is official. He was the only one there. And uh, it's Leonardo. And the reason I bring that up is because of something that you guys learned in third grade that was so important is why do we get fired up about different Ninja Turtles? Why is Michelangelo better, Donatello, or Leonardo? Why, are they, why do we get fired up about them? Because the fact is, is they're all different, but we're all different. We all like different things. We all experience different things. We're kind of like, I like Leonardo because I tend to be like Leonardo, and Michelangelo, guys like to be like Michelangelo, right? They're all different in their own way. But the thing that is really great about all of them is you need all of them to fight against what is going on in the world, to fight against the evil that they're fighting against. They have to work together. And it fits exactly into, the, if we can get fired up in the world, is so fired up, I think this, or I think that. And we got fired up the other, in third grade, when you guys were there saying, this is the one that's the best. No, this is the one that's the best. And we can have our opinions, we can have all of that, but we have to recognize what Jesus tells us in our gospel today, that we are all one. And the reason that we're one is because of him. He's the only one that can bring this messiness together, right? The messiness of our world that's going on right now, the only one who can truly bring that messiness together, we learned when, we were, when you guys were in third grade. You learned it right there, that the way the messiness works is we have to come together around Jesus. And that's what we do tonight, that we have to recognize that we are one as only the Father and Jesus and the Spirit are one. And when we come around the one who is perfectly one, we become one. And all these strange things that the different characters, the different things, I, that hit me as I was thinking about that. And I was considering that. The second instance that I want to talk about with you guys today is just, uh, it was about a year and a half ago, I guess. It was, uh, well, a little more than a year and a half ago. I don't know. Who knows time anymore? We don't even know, right? And so whenever it was, confirmation for you guys in the seventh grade, right? And I was thinking, I actually was looking at that. Where did I put it? Um, it's hiding from me. I put it, oh, I set it right behind me. That's where it is. Okay. I looked at, um, I thought this was so, this is so cool. I, I, you always see classes when they pick their confirmation saints or the saints that they really feel drawn to. You see them pick, many of them pick the same ones. What was cool is that none of you picked the same saint that you, like, because why do we look at the saints? It's like superheroes, right? They're the people that we want to live our lives like. And I thought it was so cool. We have St. Luke, we have St. John Vianney, St. Catherine of Alexandria, Mother Teresa, St. Philomena, St. Isidore, St. Barnabas, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, St. Josephine Bakita, St. Catherine of Bologna, St. Monica, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Helen, St. James the Greater, St. Christopher, St. Thomas, and St. Sebastian. Those were the saints that you guys all kind of said, these are people that we really want to try to model our lives after, that we're good, holy people. And not one of them was the same. 
And it was so cool to me because that's what's so amazing is that, you know, if you got all of these saints into a room all at the same exact time, if all those saints came together into the room at one time, every single one of them, if they did, and we put them right here into the church and they would disagree with one another. They would not all like each other. They would not all get along with one another. They would have differing opinions. They would have struggles with one another. These are people that we call saints, right? And I have no, I have no doubt that St. Catherine and St. That the St. Catherines would be arguing. There would be all, like, they would argue with one another. That's what we human beings do. We have differing opinions, but we have to have the same mission. And there's one person who brings us together on mission together, and it is Jesus. And all of them live in happiness and perfect harmony together in the place around the person who brings us into unity. That we are one and with him we are one. That's the beauty of it. That's what Jesus does in a world that you guys have gone through so much in this last year and a half. You've had to experience things I would have never guessed you would have had. So even when we celebrated your confirmation together, if we knew what was coming, we would probably be, we would be like, there's no way that's possible. There's no way we could go through what we've gone through in this last year and a half. And what, what happens is when we start saying, I'm going to do it in my way, and I'm going to do it in my way, and we're all going to do it in our own way, apart from Jesus, things fall apart. And if we're wondering why our world is at odds with one another, it's because there's no centering point coming around the one who draws us together. It's Jesus, and that's what keeps us together. It's what creates unity. It's what creates mission. That's what it's all about. It's about him. And so the last, the last thing, and I was just thinking about each of you individually, right? And I have known you guys uh, longer than I've known any class in the school. And so I have gotten to know you guys really well. I was thinking about how the Ninja Turtles are all different and they're united around the purpose. You guys all chose different saints who are now celebrating in heaven all together, united around one purpose who is Jesus. And ultimately you guys are, you guys are about as different, a hum different people as different can be in one particular class, right? You guys are just, very, you guys all have different skills. You all have different strengths. You all have different weaknesses. And those weaknesses and strengths rub against each other sometimes, right? And they're gonna, and that's life. And that's what happens in life, is that we rub against one another from time to time because we have differing opinions and we think differently. And I, that person sometimes in class drives me crazy, but that person in class sometimes drives me crazy. It happens, right? It's real, it's the reality, it'll happen the rest of your life. But if we don't have the same purpose together, that's what it was able to get you guys through together. It was all surrounded around Jesus. And we come here today, and Jesus prays what? That you all would be one as he and the Father are one. And I was thinking about all these different things. I, I just wanna share this briefly. What I, I was thinking, the different things that I think are good, that I personally, it could be, you might be like, I didn't even know I was good at that, but what I have witnessed in each of you, that I think is so good for us to draw out and recognize what's good in each of us. I, just as Conrad happens to be first, right? Because it's fun to pick on Conrad too, right? So um, he's, because why? Because of his very gift. I think Conrad's gift, and I think this is so important for us to remember what our gifts are, right? Conrad is about as easy going as easy going gets, right? It's his gift. And you, you, this is proof in the pudding because what we did at their confirmation retreat proves it, right? We did, he was the only one that I was certain I could get away with this with, right? And I wouldn't get, and like, cause he'd be like, oh man, you know, but we, we, I wanted to show the kids how important, like when we put the anointing of the oil on their, on their foreheads, when the bishop or the, when the priest does that, I wanted to show them what, how they used to do it in the Old Testament, right? And so we dumped a full gallon of oil on Conrad's head, right? Vegetable oil right on him. And it took him about 30 minutes to get all of that oil out of him. And he's the only one that would have been easy going enough to not throw a bit, to not get fired up about it. And so that's his gift, right? We all have different gifts. Every single one of us does. That's the one that always makes me laugh. You know, I, I don't even know if he's gonna know what this means, but I think then we get to Finnan, right? And I was thinking about Finnan. <laughs> Finnan is, uh, I, w I, I think Finnan is a diplomat, right? Like, I think that's kind of what I think. Finnan is really good at saying really, really hard things in a way that people are going to be able to receive them, right? And I think that's one of his gifts, right? Like, he can say something like that people probably aren't going to like in the class, and some other people in the class might say it, and they'd be like, wow, he's really mean or a jerk, right? But if Finnan says it, like, he can get away with it. There's like a little bit, he's, just, he's, a, he's a good diplomat, right? Like, kind of like, he can say a hard thing in a kind way, right? I was thinking about, uh, within Maria, I was thinking of, with Maria, 
since you've been little, I'm like, she's like an entrepreneur, right? Like, she is ready to, like, go and just get some stuff done in the world. She's going to, like, what's, what's got to be done? i got a good idea. I'm going to come up with the idea. Every single one of you has a different gift, right? Every single one of you, it's a beautiful thing. I was looking at Riley. I, like, one of my things with Riley, like, they're all like, oh, my goodness, what's he going to say, all right? And this is the beauty of it, is that we all have different gifts. Riley's gift is service, right? Like, I always think about, that, like, she's, she's ready to serve all the time here at Mass. She's here to serve. We're like, hey, we need an extra server. Can you come? She comes. She's always ready to go help service in some way or another. There's, like, this servant's heart that is in her that I was just taken by over the years. Uh, then we go to Caitlin, right? One of the things that I think is great about Caitlin is Caitlin is a go-getter. Whatever she's doing, she's going to do it, right? I mean, there she is, all right? Like, whatever she's doing, she's all in on doing it. And it was so, like, I don't think I have received personal emails from anybody in this class, but I got personal, like, Caitlin would be like, hey, I need your help with something, Father. Like, different things like that as she's going through a project. Like, that's a go-getter, right? Like, that would be a person, hey, I need to get, I, need, I got a job I want to accomplish. Uh, I was thinking of, like, that when I think of Brock, right, his patron saint is the perfect person when I think of him, right? All right there, he's right in front of me. I was looking at him, mass, man, all right, um, right? Brock, Brock's, like, he picks Saint Isidore as his favorite saint, and I was like, like, if, if Brock doesn't become a farmer, I'm going to be pretty shocked, right? Like, I just, like, that's the beauty of it. He's going to be, like, that's his, that's his thing, right? Like, whenever I think of him, I'm thinking of him on the farm. I think of him in his boots and his jeans and all those kind of things, right? Like, that's it. Uh, we'll go uh, to Blaine, right? Blaine picked Barnabas, right? Like, for his saint. He is always, he's, he's he, the two things, he's, he's intense and he's an encourager. So, right, like, we intend, I'm saying, I can be the same way a lot of times, right? I can be really intense, which means then I have to go back after I've been intense to encourage somebody because I was really intense in the moment, right? And we, that's his gift, his encouragement, helping people, right? Helping people get to there. Um, I want to, we'll do these quick because you're all like, okay, but we got to get, we got to do this because I want you guys to know your gifts. It's important for you to know your gifts, whether you recognize them or not. Emma. Emma is, one, like, for, for an eighth grader, Emma is potentially one of the greatest truth seekers I've ever seen. She just is seeking truth. She wants to know truth. She wants to understand, I need more information. Give me more information. Tell me. This is like this gift of seeking out the truth. Like, let me know what the truth is, and she's going to keep fighting for that truth until she discovers the truth. I was like, man, what a gift. That is an awesome, awesome gift. Uh, uh oh, I'm running. All right, there you're gonna use it. That's a bell that tells me you're running long, Father. Okay, um, Gracie, right? I, whenever I think of Gracie, I, like even under the mesh, like her eyes are really big, right? She like her like her, it's it's exactly who she is, right? Like oh no, what is he gonna say? But there's always a joy. There's a there's a smile, and she just you're waiting for Grace Gracie to burst out into laughter at any moment, right? There it is. All right, so right, that's it. What a gift. What an awesome awesome thing. Uh, what I was thinking about, and this is really an amazing, like an incredible gift. I think about Olivia. When I think of Olivia, I just think, like, what, what better could you have than a gift of faith? Like, this faithfulness. Like, I see, it's like, this girl, like, she's, I just see a holy girl. When I look, and what, like, what more could you want than to be holy and faithfulness? What an awesome and awesome example to the people in this class, right? To see that in one another. Uh, we'll keep moving Tessa, right? Whenever I think of Tessa, the image that I always have of Tessa is when she was, I don't remember if she was in, uh, must have been fifth grade or so, like, and I remember her batting on the softball team with, like, eighth graders, <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, is she going to be okay out there? And then I saw her, I was like, she's going to be fine, right? Like, she's going to be fine. Right? <laughs> no, small but mighty, right? Like, that's her. That's who she is. This is the gift. This is who we are. Uh, Layla. You know what I thought about? I was thinking about Layla. It's like, I think she's always the person who's going to fight for justice, right? Like, she is, that's the person. She's going to stand for what's just, like, hey, you're being treated unfairly. I was even thinking, like, that's what she does in class when she feels the teachers are treating us unfairly. I'm going to be the one to call it out, right? Like, that's going to be it. That's, that's Layla. Uh, Alex, one of the, this is a similar trait to, to what I was talking about with Emma, but with a different sense. She is this seeker who is this open-minded seeker, ready to just like take in information as well. Like this, this, which is one of my favorite things about human beings is their desire to seek out things. You're, and you're so open to like, what is it? What's coming? What's coming next? Thinking about that. Well, a couple more. We're getting there. I wanted to, and uh, first we'll start with Drew L, right? 
I think of, the first thing I think of with Jewel, he's like, oh, all right. They all get, it's so fun to watch. I wish I could see their whole face, right? Like, all right, see what they're thinking, see them sweating it out a little bit. All right, so Drew L, first thing I think of is talkative, right? Like super, yep, he's ready. He's ready for a conversation, right? But it's positive, right? Like this positive, this positive vibe of being able to share what's going on inside of him. That's such a gift to be able to share what's going on inside of him. Remember that. That's it. Right, your mic's on. Okay, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I was just telling tell Abby what's up a little bit. Though. Okay, yeah, he, yeah, so all kinds of excitement going on here tonight, right? Then Drew, Drew Clement. I, I, I've never seen this more in an eighth grader before. He is, I've never seen someone work harder. This is a work, he is a worker, right? Like this kid is always looking to work. He's always looking to get jobs done. I'm just like, man, he is like, like physical labor, like get in, like let me do some work. He's ready to work. I'm like what a gift, right? Like so different in each and every one of them. Uh, let's see, Abe. This is, all right, so Abe, right? I'm thinking of Abe, I'm thinking this is a patient man right? Abe is a patient, patient soul, right? Abe was the only guy in the class for a while, right? When all the boys were gone, right? All the boys were gone on quarantine for a while. Abe remained there with all the girls that whole time, right? <laughs> he was there. That's patience, right? That's preparing you. <laughs> so, um, pretty, and that's his gift, his patience, right? And then I was thinking of, I think lastly, is Santi. Santi is, uh, like, what is, this is his gift, right? Santi is always, he's this friendliness, he's always ready to say hello. Like he's one of those kids, like I don't ever have to worry, he's ha if he's even having a bad day, he's going to say hello to me in the hallway, right? It's a friendly, this kindness, this friendliness that's ready to come. And here's the thing, right? Is those are all your gifts. Those are the gifts you've been given. There's more than just that, but I wanted you guys to know them. Because those gifts that we're talking about tonight, when you use them for, your own, for yourself, right, it's Jesus, others, yourself, you have to use those gifts for Jesus first. You are, when you use all of that, that's how you've gotten through the last nine years or however many years you've been here together. You've gotten through the years with the gifts. You all have different gifts. Sometimes those gifts drive you crazy about one another, right? That's what gifts do, right? That's how they, how they work. Sometimes they, they're seen as gifts. Sometimes we're like, oh, that's their gift, right? That's what we do. But the beauty of it is, is when we give them to God, when we give our gifts to God, he makes them, increases them, makes them powerful, makes them supernatural. And that's what we do, that Jesus' desire for me, for you, for every single one of us, is that very line that he gives us tonight, that he and the Father are one. And when we are in mission with Jesus Christ, with the gifts that we've been given, he does powerful things. And he did powerful things with all of you while you're here. And he'll do more powerful things when you guys leave here, but he has to be at the center. And it's what joy comes from. And I know you guys put it out there on the board, out there on the, on the fence again. It's about joy. We find joy by giving our gifts to God, not using them for ourselves, but giving them to Jesus so that he can transform them to be greater. That's joy. Jesus is the means of what we, why we do what we do, and it's what brings us together. And the adults probably aren't used to this, but you guys are used to this. I want to pray with you guys one last time before you guys leave here, as we do at the end of a school mass, all right? <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And Jesus, I give each of you, to you, each of our eighth graders, I give to you Conrad and Finnan, Maria, Riley, Caitlin, Brock, Blaine, Emma, Gracie, Olivia, Tessa, Layla, Alex, Drewel, Drew C, Abe, and Santi. I ask that you would be with them every day, that they might always know their gifts, that they might know that they are beloved sons and daughters, and that they are just that. And when they don't believe it, make them believe it. Help them to know it. Help them to, as the boys learn so powerfully, that they are called to be tillers and protectors that they are called to be just that, and they are called to avoid being barbarians and avoid being cowards, but that they might all be noble, knowing that they are your sons and daughters, and that they might know that truth deeper and deeper. Father, I give them to you, and I ask that you would guide them today and every single day of their lives. And we, their families and loved ones, come together now in prayer for them, asking that you would be, let them be one as you and the Father are one, as we pray who for, in gratitude for them together, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.
I'll invite the congregation to stand and the kid, whoever's doing the, God, or the petitions to come on forward. And we bring all of our needs, our intentions, and our prayers to our Father in heaven. You guys can start whenever you're ready. After each petition, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the class of 2021, that we will continue to share our talents and abilities for the good of others in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Mother Church, our Bishop Shanky and Toko, Priest Father Adam and Father David, religious and laity, the Lord will come to build in the strength of the people, especially here at St. Mary's. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents, families, teachers, friends, and all those loved ones we carry in our hearts, that God will reward them for all the love and encouragement they have shown us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation, increase in religious life, and holy marriages throughout the diocese, and especially from St. Mary's, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and homebound, that the healing presence of God will bring them joy and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice to reign throughout the land, may we actively participate in bringing unity and harmony to our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the benefactors of St. Mary's living and deceased who have generously given them have given up their time, talents, and treasure to help pave the way for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray, as we begin summer and move on to high school in the fall, may we find time for rest and renewal before our new adventure begins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all service men and women who so faithfully serve or have served our country so we can enjoy the blessings of freedom. Keep them safe and bring them home to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all farmers, may they be able to finish planting their crops. Please grant them patience and safety and that they will have bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Father, we bring all of our prayers, our needs, and our petitions before you, and we ask that you would answer them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated. Thanks, guys. Please join us in the offertory hymn, Sanctuary Song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The 
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate as our dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, our brother, Bishop Lewis, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints you who have, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. When the paraclete comes, whom I will send you, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you also will bear witness, says the Lord. Hallelujah. For the distribution of Holy Communion, what we'll do, I'll have uh, Father Dave will come to the break in the middle of the church, and we'll have everybody on this side over here come forward first. Uh, for those on the other side, just hang out until everybody's finished on this side, come down the middle and then out to the side. I'll come over to this side first, and I'll come across. I'll get all you guys as I come across, uh, come little by little like we normally do at Mass. For those of you behind them, just come forward after the students at each particular spot. And I think uh, for those of you who are with us tonight that are of different faiths or different faith beliefs, feel free to come forward if you'd like to with your arms crossed so Father and I can offer the Lord's blessing over you, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we might be united in prayer here tonight.
Taking of this divine sacrament, O oh Lord, constantly increase your grace within us, and by cleansing us with its power, make us always ready to receive so great a gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll do, uh, we'll do the closing blessing in a final hymn, and then we'll begin the official uh, graduation ceremony immediately following. So uh, we'll do this final blessing, and then uh, we'll wait for these guys to get back. Well done, you guys. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Okay, change the program. We're all going to stay right here. Have a seat. of the ceremony I just wanted to say the kids know this but to all of you you have a phenomenal bunch of 
people here who are no doubt going to change the world in amazing, amazing ways. Um, I've truly gotten to know them in the last three years. Um, we've had a really good time, we've laughed a lot, been some tears, um, all kinds of good stuff, but they are ready and they are gonna conquer the world, I have no doubt. So, Right now we're gonna do our honor roll awards. So instead of having the kids come up and get their certificates, I put all the different certificates and awards they received in their pews. And so they're gonna stand when I say their name and face their adoring fans and then um, you guys can clap and hoot and holler for them. All right, honor roll awards. Given to those students who have been in the honor roll and or high honor roll at least one quarter this school year. Brock Clement. <laughs> Abraham Jean-Jacques. Our high honor roll winners, our award winners are given to students who attained a 3.5 grade point average or higher this school year. Drew Clement. <laughs> Emma Gregor. Caitlin Leonard. Conrad Pfaff. Santi Pina. Alex Robinson. And Riley Rogers. Our A Average Award winners are given to students who have attained a cumulative A in grades five through eight. Uh, Drew Lordson. <laughs> Maria Long. <laughs> Blaine Tarr. <laughs> and Olivia Yednock. The final award we're giving this evening um, is a pretty big award. It's an awesome award and it's a huge honor. And this is the award that all the faculty and staff and the eighth graders um, select a boy and a girl to represent um, the American Legion Award. This award is given to two students, one boy and one girl, who most exemplify courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship, and service as voted on by their classmates and the faculty. There are also two honorable mention awards given as well. Tonight, our award will be presented by Mr. Steve Worthington of the American Legion Post 78. Our honorable award mention, our honorable mention for the girls is Maria Long. <laughs> our honorable mention for the boys is Santi Pina. This year's American Legion Award winner for our girls is Olivia Yednock. <laughs> and our winner for our boys is Drew Lordson. Congratulations to all of our students and, um, and great work. classroom with students, whom the majority had been together since kindergarten. Several new students joined me at St. Mary's for the very first time. The new students and I were nervous those first couple of days of school. We were unsure of ourselves and each other, but we quickly learned we were very sure of ourselves. As I came to know this group of students, I learned they were funny, they were smart, they were caring, and they were loud. <laughs> I also learned they were very generous. 
Okay, you guys. Oh, in fourth grade, we went to the Peoria Riverfront Museum for our field trip. The class spent considerable time in the gift shop, as most classes do, looking for something for themselves. Not this group. When they came out, they were carrying a large bag, and they were almost all jumping up and down with excitement. They handed me a bag. I opened the bag. This group of kids had pulled their own spending money, along with some of their mothers, chipping in for the tax, because the kids didn't realize you had to pay sales tax. <laughs> and they bought me the set of ducks. <laughs> As they explained, they wanted to get me something, and seeing the ducks reminded them they were the ducklings, and I was the mama duck. As they know, these ducks have followed me from the classroom to my office, where they sit on my bookcase. They'll always be a part of me, and you'll always be a part of me because of this. This class is also steadfast in their faith. We began a new tradition this year by having an eighth grade luncheon. And during the luncheon, students shared a recent writing assignment. Most of the students began by quoting a Bible verse, and then went on to mention how we can talk about God at school. They talked about how they've grown in their faith, they have a better understanding of God in themselves, they have shared holy moments with us, and they have filled us with joy. Lastly, this class spoke about being a family. They are friends, but they are family. Even though they are moving on, and they may not see each other every day, they are still a family. Eighth graders, remember to always seek joy, to continue to grow in your faith as it's a never-ending journey. And finally, don't forget your family at St. Mary's. You have etched a place in our hearts, and we will not forget about you. Don't forget about us and come back and visit. Tonight not only marks the end of the eighth graders' career here at St. Mary's, it also marks the end for 10 families as their youngest or only child graduates tonight from St. Mary's. When I call your name, parents, please stand. Andy and Joni Collins. Kayla Highland and Cord Gregory. <laughs> Amy Zip and Cleveland Jean Jacques. <laughs> Andrea Leonard and Brian Leonard. <laughs> Jason and Anna Long. <laughs> Robert and Shari Fah. Joe and Melissa Pena. <laughs> Kelly Villier and John Robinson. <laughs> and Gabe and Allison Tarr. <laughs> we thank you for the countless hours of helping with concessions, sporting events, 4 H fair duty, drawdown, and anything else we asked you to help with. Your dedication and generosity to St. Mary's has been greatly appreciated and all of you will be greatly missed. I especially want to thank all the graduating families tonight for allowing us to share in a moment of your child's life. It's been a pleasure and a blessing getting to know them, to help them, and to watch them grow and mature here. May God always be with you and bless your family for years to come. Thank you. Now, would the eighth graders please rise? Father Adam, the 2021 eighth grade class of St. Mary's School has met all the requirements set forth by the State of Illinois, the Catholic Diocese of Peoria, and the Education Commission of St. Mary's Parish. It's my pleasure to present them at this time to receive the diplomas. Mr. Jim Bedner was going to present the names. He is unable to be here tonight, but Mrs. Kim Cheek will be presenting the names. Brock Jones Clement. <laughs> Drew Christopher Clement. <laughs> Tessa Olivia Collins.
Gracie Aaron K. Cool. Emma Ray Elizabeth Gregory. Abraham Douglas Jean Jacques. Mitchell Krenz. Andrew James Lordson. Caitlin Michelle Leonard. Maria Sophia Long. Santi Eloy Pina. Alexandra Day Robinson. <laughs> Riley Sue Rogers. <laughs> I don't think I cried this much when my own child graduated. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Blaine Zachary Tarr. <laughs> Olivia Ruth Yedna. Ohana means family, which means no one gets left behind or forgotten. Stitch. This quote is something that our class must live by while we adjust to high school at PTHS, Prairie Central, and Central Catholic. We are moving forward in our lives and following our own paths. However, we all need to remember where our roots lay and our family. This class is our family, the classmates that we sat by, talked to, and made memories with. We will never say goodbye, just see you later. That way no one is left behind. Our class has formed bonds and attachments to each other like you do with siblings. We have been there for each other and caught one another when someone else fell down. Our class reminds me of Simon and Jesus. Simon always caught Jesus when he fell, just like our class. Our class has always been close to each other. 
Moving to high school will be hard because we will all drift from each other and eventually maybe only stay in contact with a couple people. But the memories are still there. They're memories of all of us laughing together during every class. They're mem remembrance of the rubber Tojo, the ruckus we caused our teachers, even though now I'm wondering whether or not we should have actually caused them all that trouble. Looking back now, I know that our class was a handful, but I also know that our class lives. We brought life into every situation. Whether the life was needed, it was always there. I personally loved that. The little details are what matters, and our class understood that. Our class did not dwell on the past. We lived in the present, and we took towards the future. We enjoyed what we have and relinquished the past as if it didn't happen, which isn't always a bad thing. We didn't hold grudges or put up walls. Our class was open to each other. There was always someone to listen or to be heard by. I would like to thank all the outstanding men, women, and children that have helped our class to grow and develop not only as people, but as children of God. Remember that this is not a goodbye, but a see you later. I will see you later, class of 2021. Being as the priest has already done the final blessing out of order, uh, I'll invite over the guys for the for the song now. Yeah. <clears throat>
Dreams by Kim Erickson. You're the driver of your destiny, passenger of none, in control and looking forward of things that must be done. You're the captain of your ship, destination unknown, plans to help you get there and freedom to bring you home. You're the pilot of your airplane, fly as high as you can. Life is what you make it, so follow your plan. Hopes and dreams not yet reached, motivation on display, a journey full of ups and downs, experience gained each day. Direction is always forward, backwards remains the same. Discover your authentic self and have a willingness to change. Enhance each quality given, develop talents you are blessed, transform your heart into one of gold, and believe in more than yourself. Mistakes are made, we move on, we get back on our feet. We're here to support you always, should you ever need us. For every start, there is a finish. For every beginning, there is an end. Hold on to your accomplishments and even tie them to your friends. Please stand. <clears throat> this is in closing tonight. I want to thank everybody for being here. This is a uh, a blessing for sure to be all together. I want to thank all the faculty, staff, uh, uh, for all the beautiful music as well. Thanks to everybody who put that together tonight. Uh, well done. Man, you guys like killed it on those songs, you guys. Great job. That was really, really awesome. Um, well done. And um, it's just a blessing to be together. And um, I'm going to ask, even though I've already done it, we'll ask one more blessing over you all as we come to a close, and then we'll let them do pomp and circumstance on their way out here. The we'll last Lord's blessing over you guys one last time as eighth graders. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.